I'm pretty sure that today's video is gonna be kinda controversial. What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Eric J. Coons, if you don't already know from the channel name. And throughout the last maybe four to five years, I've been putting out videos that are on skate spots through my Urban Skate Spot series, as well as skate parks. I've given each one of the Dallas-Fort Worth area skate parks their very own episode. So today what I wanna do is I wanna take all of those parks that I've ever been to and I wanna rank them, pit them up against each other and make them fight to the death. Okay, you want a tussle? Now, as many of you know that live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, there are a ton of parks so today I'm gonna cover 21 of them and I'm gonna show you footage and I'm gonna rank them from what I think is the funnest to what I think are the worst skate parks in the area. I imagine the comment section on this one is gonna be interesting. Also, before we get started, I wanna give a real quick shout out to my fellow YouTuber and friend, Jake McCollum, who gave me the idea for this video. Here you go. Let's get into it. The best and worst skate parks in Dallas-Fort Worth area. First on my list is Allen Skate Park, AKA The Edge. This park was one of the first really big concrete parks in the DFW area. It was built right around 2005. And it also means a lot to me because it is the place where I sort of learned how to skateboard. It has a lot of obstacles just kind of everywhere. It's got three bowls. It's got a huge straight course. But one of the big complaints that I've heard from a lot of people is that everything is too high. It looks like it was more built for bikes rather than like skateboard or rollerblades. So if you go here, just know that everything is really high. A lot of the ledges are chipped from the BMX bikes like metal pegs, but it's not anything that you wouldn't experience at any, you know, old park. It's also a park that I was really proud to have 180 and kickflip the 11 stair. So it means a lot more to me, but taking out my memories from there and also all the times that I've gotten hurt because I've broken all sorts of bones and sprained all sorts of things, I would give this park an over overall rating of three out of five. Next on our list is Plano Skate Park, AKA Carpenter Skate Park, which was built not too long ago. And actually the city fought forever to see where it should be placed. And it finally got placed where it's at now. The park is really fun. However, the quarter pipes seem to act more like launch ramps than quarter pipes because if you get too much speed, you don't go up, you just go over. The bowl in the back is amazing, especially if you already love skating bowls. This bowl's huge, it's awesome. However, the flow of the rest of the park, like the street section, personally seems to push skaters into each other as it was built pretty narrow. Most of the obstacles are fun though and at a good height for all skill levels, so I'm gonna give this one a 3.5 out of 5. Up next, we've got Frisco Skate Park. When this park was built, I honestly had no idea how awesome it would be. This park is gigantic at just over 47,000 square feet and has two amazing bowls and an equally fantastic street course with an insane vert wall at the back of the park. I just, I don't have a lot of bad stuff to say about this park other than maybe that the marble or granite ledges that are towards the front or whatever they are, are awful to grind, but they do slide. And also you wanna watch out for kids because there's a lot of families in Frisco. But this aside, the park itself is amazing. And I give this park a solid 4.5 out of five. Moving over into Dallas proper, kind of near like Deep Ellum area, we've got Four Down Skate Park. The one thing you'll see that's lacking on this list, by the way, is that throughout the DFW area, there are hardly any indoor skate parks and Four Down is an indoor skate park, uh, or at least half of it is. So because of this, I'm gonna automatically reward points to anything indoors because Texas heat and random storms that Texas have suck. Four Down is extra special um, as they not only have an indoor section, but an outdoor one as well and a full size half half pipe and an amazing bowl. And they also have a clown ramp, like a 1970s clown ramp, but I'm not sure if that's uh, still up. But anyways, add to that that they frequently have art shows, concerts, food drives, and other events that support the community. And it's run by the one and only legend. He was also in X Games and on World Industries, Mike Crum, who is just an all around awesome dude. This park has it all. Did I mention that it's free most of the time? This park to me gets a solid five out of five. Moving from good to bad, we're going to Providence Skate Park. <laughs> 
Providence Skate Park is technically built for the community it resides in, but anyone and everyone can access it, though I don't know why you would unless you live nearby. This park is tiny, and the two quarter pipes have awkward angles. They kind of make like a mini ramp thing, but they're, the angles suck. And nothing grinds or slides without a significant amount of wax. I forgot to bring wax one time, and I used to use chapstick. I used to live right by here, so I would skate it, but I never really enjoyed it. Uh, also, kids come out of seemingly nowhere to use it as a playground at all hours of the day. That's like morning, afternoon, and night. Um, so I'm going to give this park my first one out of five. If you live in this area, just skate the next skate park on the list, which is... Denton Skate Park. Now, Denton Skate Park is like a prefab park that got a little extra love from a city council. Or that's what it feels like. It has a lot of skate light type wood and a lot of metal like you find in a prefab, but it's a huge park. You can also find some DIY stuff people have brought in like curbs and such. It has an awesome variety of ramps and boxes, which is super dope. Um, my big complaint would be that some of the stuff there is worn down from years of skating and the metal is super hot to fall on during the summer. And if you go almost any time of the day in any part of the year, you're going to probably ollie on a ramp and get a swarm of wasps after you, or at least that's what I experienced. The park itself is pretty cool and pretty fun though, even though it's like pretty far out there if you don't live nearby. So overall, I give this park a 3 out of 5. Next on our list is Wiley Skate Park. <laughs> Speaking of prefab parks, um, this tiny skate park has sat in Wiley for a while as the town has kind of grown around it. It's made of a mix of metal, cement, and some polywood. This park has one really crappy fly box thing that I think we all try to avoid that skate there, but everything else in this tiny park is really fun. You have four different quarter pipes, all with different angles to practice on, and the best benches to ever exist. They're like super low and just like super easy to lock in on. Although, if you don't lock in on them, people wax the top of those benches and you will eat it and probably break your head open. Um, but for it being such a small park, it has so many great obstacles, but I think it's best to skate it when kids probably are in school because if not, this becomes a playground for little kids like some of the other skate parks I've talked about in this video. I am gonna give this tiny little awesome park a 3.5 out of 5. Next up, I've got McKinney Skate Park. I actually recently did a video on this park with the help of my friends Nigel and Jake, both awesome YouTubers and friends. But now McKinney Skate Park just celebrated its 10th anniversary of being built and it is a massive park. This park has something for everyone, I think, and my only major complaint is that it's built in a way that makes it hyper conducive to head-on collisions, especially down the two main stair sets there. It has an actual pool with coping and a regular bowl with everything street you could ever want it also has like a little snake run thing and i mean the street itself is just really really cool i i really like this park i'm gonna go ahead and give this park a four out of five Next on our list is Garland Skate Park, AKA the Boneyard Skate Park, AKA it might be called something else soon. But if you've been watching my channel, you'll know I've made a few videos about this park. It's currently called the Boneyard Skate Park, like I mentioned. However, hopefully it will soon be renamed to the John Comer Memorial Skate Park, who was an amazing pro skater back in the day. And he was an adaptive skater. He was awesome. If you don't know anything about him, you should definitely look him up. Now, this park is near perfect. There are three main sections to this park, which I explained in my full Garland Skate Park video, which I'll link above and below in the description. Long story short, this park is for every skill level imaginable, as it has almost any obstacle you could ever dream of, minus, well, a full pipe. It also has three different covered areas to escape the Texas heat, which, in my opinion, is something that every park needs. My only complaint is that it gets really crowded, but, I mean, what would you expect with an all-around amazing park, right? I give this a 4.75 out of 5, and I would have given it a 5 out of 5, but I had to take off 0.25 because we had to wait almost two decades for this park. What the hell? St. Francis Skate Park. 
I feel like my rating here is going to make some people mad. Um, St. Francis is a skate park I've seen the most fights break out at. Uh, it is a skate park I once saw a guy pull a sword out of his trunk to fight like four other dudes. Uh, very interesting skate park. Lots of interesting stuff happens there. Uh, this cookie cutter skate park is basically the only skate park in Dallas proper built by the city. That is until they finish the new Bachman Lake skate park. I believe that's still where it's being built at. Um, St. Franny's got a special place in a lot of our hearts who grew up skating it and in the area, but that doesn't make it an amazing park. The park is as prefab as it gets with some DIYs brought in. However, a lot of the original boxes there have gotten stolen over the years, so that's probably why the DIYs have been added. This park is fun, kind of small, and if it were based off nostalgia, I'd give this park a lot higher of a score, but looking at it objectively, I gotta give this a 2 out of 5. Next on our list is Farmer's Branch Skate Park. Now, Farmer's Branch Skate Park in a lot of ways resembles St. Francis in the way that the ramps and everything are built. It even has some of the same like bench concepts and quarter pipes and half pipe and all that, but uh, it's definitely better maintained and the park has more square footage, which equates to it being way less crowded. And to me, it's a way better setup. Uh, it also has way less swords being pulled out of trunks to chop people up. So that's a plus, I think. This park has been around for a long time, but for some reason I didn't discover it until just a few years ago. And uh, although it's prefab as hell, I actually really enjoy this skate park. Of course, it's no Frisco skate park, so uh, I'm gonna just give this a three out of five and move on. <laughs> All right, let's skate over to Irving Skate Park. Now, Irving Skate Park is a good looking cement park, but for some reason, I always find myself getting bored after about an hour of most of the park. My favorite thing by far is the box you hit right when you ride in with elongated stairs on each side. This may be actually one of my favorite skate park ledges of all time. Um, it makes up for the park. Like I would travel just to that park just to skate that box because the step up to me is trash. It's not my angle i guess i hate the angles on it um but uh but yeah that middle box is like what i feel like you should come for or maybe even the seven stair that said the seven stair is really good as well and so are the rails um so uh with all of this taken in and you know half the park not being skatable for me personally but the rest being like really really good i gotta find some sort of middle ground so i rate this skate park a three out of five Hopping on over to Louie, uh, the Louisville Skate Park, uh, aka, well, it used to be called the Scion Skate Park or something like that because Toyota used to pay for it or something. I don't know the story behind that. But anyways, it's called the Louisville Skate Park now. And when this park first opened a while back, I wasn't a huge fan of it because it seemed like it somehow attracted really crappy people. I don't know, like it just like every time I would try to talk to people, people were really rude. And also it felt like the flow was really weird at this park. But as I went more in recent years, I kind of fell in love with this park. It's mostly cement with obstacles for all skill levels and also has a pretty cool wooden mini with a spine in the middle. Um, one of my favorite features is the super long sea ledge in the center of the park. It also tends to have a lot of quad skaters in it. Uh, which is pretty cool because I know like our crowds are kind of mixing now and even rollerbladers and everybody So it's a really cool place to like meet up and meet cool people nowadays uh, Not the same as it used to be this park also has two pretty good step ups One being the smallest step up outside of a tech tech setup. It is like the smallest step up I've ever seen in my life. It's like three inches um, But overall this park is really fun and I would give this park a four out of five All right, let's Nebraska Furniture Mart our way over to the Colony Skate Park. Now the Colony is one of the best small skate parks you will ever skate. It, it's amazing. It replaced a weird wooden skate park that used to be in it a while back. Um, but this one, this one is just so much better um, and so much better than any small park I've ever skated. This is one of those parks where every obstacle is actually usable and the height of the boxes and rails are just, they are just perfect. 
Um, they even got the quarter pipe angle spot on. And I don't really have anything bad to say about this park other than that I wish it was a bit bigger just because they designed it so well that I assume if it got bigger they would have kept designing really good stuff. Um, this park is going to be for skateboarders and rollerblades only. I think BMX is allowed but it gets really crowded with BMX so it's a bit small for you if you're BMX. Um, I give this park a solid 4.5 out of 5. What's up Colony? Next up is Clayton Skate Park. Now, I skated this park on a random adventure to the outskirts of DFW, and overall, I like this park, and I think maybe my favorite feature was the bank to ledge. The quarter pipes have good angles too. Uh, I noticed though that all of the boxes here need a lot of constant waxing. It's also a very small park, and I'm not sure that they made the most of the room that they had. I feel like there could have been a better setup, and they didn't have to put like, a giant ass gazebo in the middle. I went early in the morning, but I imagine that if you went here during a busy time with like 10 or more skaters, this park would be like unskatable. But if you know you have a small group and you go and hardly anybody's there, I bet the skate park would be pretty fun. Just bring a shit ton of wax. Um, I give this park a mm, 3.5. So next on our list, we've got a skate park that I don't actually have any footage from. I've only skated it one time, but it's Vandergriff Skate Park out in like Fort Worth, Arlington area. When I skated it, I remember it being a really cool skate park. However, it was really far from me, so I just didn't skate it that much. I remember that it has a lot of really good quarters. It's got a lot of good boxes. It's got a good flow. I also remember that the stair set was kind of big, but it was really fun if you'd like to throw yourself down pretty big stair sets. And overall, the park is just built really nice. I don't think that it was like the most amazing thing I've ever skated, but I do think it is pretty good for its size. So I'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of five. Let's move on. Power sliding over to another really small skate park. We've got Racamontes Skate Park. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. This little park in Arlington, Texas is a skate park dedicated to a skater who sadly passed away some years back. Now the park is pretty fun, but the main draw is, I think, the box with the rail on the side top of it. Um, for such a small park, they added such unique obstacles like that and also some other like weird brick thing that they had, which you don't usually see in small skate parks. Usually they're pretty conservative of what they put in. I found that grinding anywhere though here was a challenge and required repeated applications of wax on everything. The bank slash hip thing at the front of the park is really fun but really steep for beginners and the benches here might as well be thrown in the dumpster because I don't even know what they're doing with those. Um, overall though, like I said, it is unique for a small park so you know what? I'm going to be generous on this one and give this a three out of five because it is fun. Flapping our wings over to Dove Skate Park. Now this skate park is tough to judge because it's pretty fun for some reason that I don't know, but it only has six obstacles and all of them seem to have been skated and damaged by like Hagrid or something. You're a poorly constructed skate park, Harry. It almost feels like when you're skating there that you're in the back of someone's house in their driveway with just a couple like random things set up. And I remember that the Braille guy came through and enjoyed it when he skated it with John Hill. Um, but I don't know, man. It's just a weird park. This spot apparently used to have a half pipe back in the 80s or 90s until the city of Grapevine tore it down and built this like hodgepodge of stuff that you see now. Uh, my favorite thing here is by far the bench. And if you leave the park and go behind the tennis courts, there's also a really good two stair. Probably the best two stair on the planet. Overall though, I have to give this park a lower score because the two stair is technically not in the park and uh, the bench is really all it's got going for it in my opinion. So although this is a great place for beginning skaters, I gotta give this park a two out of five.
Next on the list is another skate park that like Vandergriff, I don't have any footage of. So I reached out to some of my friends and I actually have a really good rollerblading friend named Wes Phelan who actually just came out with the whole rollerblading part. You should go check it out. But he sent me some of his own footage of the new park, at least the covered part. So I'm gonna start playing that right now while I'm talking about the park. So this skate park is called Alliance Skate Park. It's about $10 to get into. So it's one of the only skate parks on my list that actually costs money to get into. However, I think it's pretty worth it. This skate park actually hosted the X Games in the early 2000s or maybe late 90s and they actually tore that course down to build a course outside and inside obviously the footage you're seeing right now is from the inside section it doesn't have walls but it does have a roof to cover from rain and things like that it's got quarter pipes it's got mini ramps it's got wood that is sometimes too smooth to skate and you slip out and die the outside has got spines it's got half i mean it's got everything that you'd ever need at a skate park uh, i'm going to give this a couple points off just because it does cost money and there's so many free skate parks in the dallas area however alliance is awesome and you should definitely go and support them by giving them this ten dollars they got a skate shop too that you should go to called rhythm skate shop i'm going to give this a solid 4.25 out of five all right let's move on all right, let's hike our way over to Chisholm Trail Skate Park. Now, Chisholm Trail is a really cool skate park, but on a hot day, there's hardly any shade besides where the seating area is, so watch out for that. That's really my only complaint, though. The park feels and looks really good, and it's got something for everyone, no matter what your skill level is. We're talking a small bowl, a huge bowl, a giant street course that wraps every which way. I feel like the spacing here was done so well, and as long as there's not an event going on, you can usually carve your own little corner out for just you and the homies to sesh. So I feel like this is a really dope skate park. It's got a lot of unique features and regular ones that you'd see at other skate parks. It's got really long boxes that you can grind forever. Like, I just really love the way that this park is set up. I'm gonna give this park a 4.5 out of five. Oh yeah. Last, but certainly not least, is Roanoke Skate Park. Now I left this park for last because it is one of my favorite skate parks in all of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It has perfect angles, it's got unique obstacles, and the overall flow of this park is just, it's beautiful. <laughs> I am a huge Banks guy, I love to skate Banks, and this park has two really unique spoon-shaped bank slash quarter pipe obstacle things that are what dreams are made of. There's also this terrifying butter knife rail thing that for some reason I love and I've gotten broken off on. I feel like someone was really hungry whenever they made this park. It's kind of hard to name though my favorite feature because the whole park is my favorite feature. From the perfect ramp to ramp with the dope ledge on the side to the flat to downhill manual pad to the hubbas and the ledges that are perfectly placed around the park this place it has everything it also has a sweet pool for those interested in pool skating even the stairs there feel like skating butter the rails are perfect i mean it's an all-around great park i would say that my only complaint is that again if you're there on a hot day this park can probably dehydrate you quick because there's not a lot of shade take a lot of water but i mean a lot of skate parks are like that so i can't really fault it for that although i do got to take off a couple small points for that so i'm gonna give this park a solid 4.75 out of 5 because it is mm, oh it is a beautiful park and all right guys, that concludes my video of the 21 worst and best skate parks in the DFW area. If I missed one that you loved and or you hated that you wanted me to mention, please leave it in the comments below to help other people that are coming to the DFW area or already live here and are looking for some skate spots. I will say I left out some of the skate parks that either were torn down, obviously, because I didn't want to give people false hope of mentioning like a really great skate park and then they could go to it. And I also didn't mention skate parks that I've never been to because even though I've lived here for 35 years, I haven't been to every skate park in the DFW area. Some were newer and I just never got around to going to them. Some were older and they were just way too far off to go to. So again, leave them down in the comments if I miss your favorite skate park or your most hated skate park. Let everybody else know down in the comments what you think of those parks. And with that guys, I'm going to leave a video right up here that you can go and check out that covers actually my favorite ditch skate spots in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that I've skated before. Go and check that out. It's a super cool one. I'll see you guys next time. Live well, skate better. I'm Eric J. Coons and until next time, Keep exploring. Peace out.